Hello and welcome to the State of the Histogram at the SLO conference in May 2021. Um, thank you very much for showing up and thanks a lot for the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Heinrich Hartmann. I currently work for a company called Zalando who sells socks and all kinds of other fashion articles in Europe. But the main reason for this talk is actually my former employment. So I used to be with a company called Sekonus, who builds a monitoring platform. And as part of my work there, I co-authored a paper together with Theo Schlossnagel called The Circle Hist. So The Circle Hist is a histogram data structure for IT operations applications. And the, in the paper, we actually look at a variety of other histogram implementations that are available as well and benchmark them um, against each other and um, just see how they perform and how they perform and what their size characteristics are. And the idea of this talk is just to give you an overview about the related work that exists in the histogram space and also um, share some of the evaluation results. Of course, this talk is very brief, so um, if you are later interested in the full glory, then please um, look up this uh, paper. It's easy to find on the archive, and um, then you get the full details. Also, let me mention right away that the source code um, and uh, the data sets that we used for the evaluations are on GitHub, so you can do everything for yourself. And um, of course, everything that I said should also be taken with the necessary uh, grain of salt since um, I used to be uh, working for a vendor and um, I have some stakes in this game. So, but let's get right along. Um, maybe we start with a little uh, introduction to histograms before we dive in further. Um, so why are we talking about this topic as a, at an SLO conference? So histograms are just a data structure that allows you to summarize data in the form of statistical distributions. So here I painted a bunch of float values in the forms of little x's and um, you can insert them into a histogram data structure. So I made a little black box here to mean just any data structure that you can insert this data in. And we call it a histogram it had, if it has this three critical properties here. First of all, it should be small. Um, so instead of storing the raw data, this is usually a much smaller a memory footprint you get from a histogram. Second of all, you should be still, besides the reduced size, be able to calculate accurate percentiles. So that's, that's good. And the third property is very critical, but a little bit more subtle, is uh, that it should be mergeable. So if you have not one histogram, but maybe a thousand or a millions of histograms, you should be able to compress them into a single histogram without losing accuracy for the percentile um, calculations. So it shouldn't matter if you had all the data, calculated the percentile, or you have like small batches of data, put them into histograms, then merge those histograms and then calculate the percentile. Ideally, those numbers would be small or at least with a bounded error. Um, yes, so why is this important for SLO conference? Well, latency SLOs uh, are a critical application here. I would argue that um, as latency SLOs are best done with uh, histograms or maybe even really possible if you have histogram data structures at hand. I've talked about this topic um, at a different conference, for example, in FOSTEM 29, um, and there's also a blog post on the Sikonis blog called Latency SLOs Done Right. Um, if you're not familiar with this, um, Look it up. Um, here we have a little bit of a different um, agenda for, for this talk. So um, let's continue with a brief history. Um, here we have a picture of Carl Pearson painting the first histogram ever existed, 1895. Fast forward 100 years, um, Brendan Gregg shouting in the data center is actually using histograms for operational purposes. So this is the first occurrence of histograms that I'm aware of. Probably at Sun there was prior art, but here we clearly see uh, latency IOs over time um, being captured in histograms and then plotted in a heat map. So already 2009, um, Brandon was doing it. Um, Three years later, 2012, um, we see histograms first showing up in monitoring products. This is um, my former boss, Theo, and uh, Sikonos um, demoing um, at a talk called uh, Monitoring and Observability in 2012, um, histograms used for um, API latencies. So here you see the throughput of an API, and here are just the latency distribution over time of these requests. 
Uh, Giotini Azul Systems, um, two years later, um, 2014, um, talks uh, about how not to measure latency. This is primarily a topic about JVM profiling and uh, GC latencies, uh, but a very insightful talk, which for the first time highlights a bunch of difficulties, systematic difficulties with measuring latency and how to best address them. It's part of this talk and this effort he went through. Uh, he also published a data structure called the HDR histogram, which is uh, very relevant, very capable, um, open source, and, and still in use. Um, same year, roughly, uh, came the T-Digest to the, to the scene. Um, it's not uh, under the hood uh, histogram as we know it, but uh, the applications are um, pretty much identical. Also, um, quantile calculations um, on top of uh, like compressed data. Um, here, Ted Nonning and Atma Ertl uh, are the, uh, the authors of that paper, that data structure. Now we come in the re into the recent years, 2019, um, paper at VLDB by uh, Marson Rim and Lee from Datadog um, are introducing a DD sketch, which really is a histogram for, for exactly the same purpose. And uh, 2020, finally, uh, Theo and myself said, well, we have to write a paper about this data structure we have been using all the time so that people will be able to find it, look it up, and uh, really make sense out of it. And uh, so here, here it is, and this is also the, the main source for this talk here. Another recent development in 2021, um, CircleHist um, underwent a licensing cha ch change and is now available as openhistogram.io. So you're going to check it out and uh, adopt it in any kind of open source product. Um, this should now be possible with this, uh, this new license. Okay, um, now that we have gone through the histo history of histograms, um, you are now in a position where you have the luxury of having like a bunch of histograms at your disposal. So if you start looking into that, you might be confused and asking, well, which one is better and which one should I use? Well, here are my um, desirable properties, uh, which I think histograms should have. First, they should be small. The insertion should be fast. You should get accurate percentiles and um, they should be mergeable. We talked about that properties before. And um, also, I think zero configuration um, is a big benefit, first for usability, so that your users don't have to make um, choices about how to configure a histogram, which um, usually involves knowing about how the histogram works, which is uh, apparently a pretty high barrier of entry. Um, the second benefit of zero configuration is compatibility. So if you have two histograms from different sources, they will always be compatible and mergeable if you didn't have to configure them. If you have to configure them, um, usually there, there are problems with merging differently configured histograms. So we see that as, as, an, as an advantage to have. Um, here are the contenders um, we looked at in the evaluation. Uh, on top of the one I already talked about, HDR histogram, DD sketch, T digest, and the circle hist. Um, we also included um, an exact histogram, which is just a NumPy array. Um, holding the raw data to see how it performs. And um, also PromQL or Prom Prometheus monitoring system has a histogram data structure, which is quite simplistic, um, just has a um, usually quite low number of uh, latency thresholds, which you configure. Um, but since this is popular at, at the time of the writing, at least um, we, uh, we thought to include it here as well. Um, since I have very little time, jump right to the conclusion um, of the evaluation. Um, the array method just is out because it's way too, too large, so that doesn't work. Um, Prometheus histogram has um, drawbacks with accuracy just because usually the number of configured buckets is so low, um, and uh, also you have a lot of configuration to do, namely choosing those thresholds. Uh, the T-Digest is very capable, very good accuracy usually. Um, we put a question mark here for mergeability. The reason for this is that um, with the T-Digest, you don't get guarantees for the accuracy of percentiles after merging multiple histograms. And usually it's okay, but we managed to find certain configurations um, where you have wild merges of different distributions where the percentile accuracy actually is, um, is going quite bad. So we are putting a question mark here. Usually it should be fine, but you don't have theoretical guarantees of how the, the percentile accuracy behaves after heavy merges. But the rest, HDR, DD, and CircleHist, they are actually using under the hood quite similar um, ways to lay out buckets and to store data, hence they all perform quite similar. Um, we argue that zero configuration gives a little 
um, advantage to the circle hist since it's just one size fits all. Here, the final um, little section of this talk is the adoption in open source technology. This is very recent development. Um, first, Björn Rammstein is also talking at this conference, has a proposal up um, for inclusion of sparse high resolution histograms for Prometheus. We're quite excited about this. Uh, this is following the observations we made um, quite closely. He also suggests a logarithmic histogram data structure. Uh, very nice to see that this is picking up speed. Um, and similarly, the Open Telemetry product um, project, uh, which involves all kinds of companies, uh, stakeholders in this, is uh, actually adding um, a logarithmic histogram data structure to their protocol specification and libraries. So also there, we are um, very happy to see this development, and um, I personally try to um, take part in the discussions there. So that is it. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, this is my Twitter, and if you want to work with me or other folks at Zalando, have a look at our job openings. We have currently two open positions in SRE. Well, that's it. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Bye-bye.